and welcome to House and Home. Being creative is something that comes natural to a human being. It's a great aspect to have no matter what field of work you're in or just the environment you're in. Tonight, we look at all things creative. Hello, um, my name is uh, Marion and I'm, I'm a clinical trainer with Murray Soaps and today I'll be talking about the LUCK method. So what does, what does LUCK mean? What does it stand for? Okay, LUCK stands for um, Long um, Acting Reversible Contraceptives. Ah, so the, this method of family planning, it lasts a long time. So there are two types of uh, LUCK method. There is the implant. I'm sure you've heard about the implant. Implant, well, PNG, we started uh, using it in 2011. That's when we had our first implant inserted. So uh, we have the implants, and the implants is inserted on your arm underneath the skin. And we have two types that we are providing at the moment in our clinics. That's a three-year method, and uh, the other one is a five-year one. The, Level plant and the gel, and then we have the other one, which is called intrauterine device. And uh, this is uh, this method lasts for 10 years, 10 to 12 years. It's non-hormonal, so it doesn't have any hormones in there. The one we are using is copper tea, and the copper destroys the sperm. Sorry, I forgot to mention earlier, like the implant it's hormonal it's got hormones in there it's the progesterone is the hormone in there and that hormone in there is the same uh, hormone that's in the depot injection that the that the women get so tell us some of the side benefits of the implant okay well uh, the implant we said it's um lo uh, long acting yeah so you can have it for a very long time eh? you know like the women will have it and then they you know forget about coming back for another day they have this um, family planning method that they're taking and it's for you know for a longer period so who can use the luck method well uh, okay any women can use the luck method the long acting methods okay like um they depending on their eligibility. Yeah, eligibility meaning that, you know, you have to check them well. They have to, uh, like, for instance, like I mentioned about IUD, yeah, the intrauterine device. I mean, a woman, before we insert that, we have to check that she doesn't have any infection, you know, like a discharge or an STI. If she has an infection, then we'd have to treat the infection first before she has the IUD. And the IUD too, it's good in a way that, you know, like women, they don't come in for checkups or some get scared. So this is a good way when they come in, we can check them first and then give the, um, the method, the IUD. And it's non-hormonal, so um, they will see, the woman will see her period. Every month she will see her period. <clears throat> the only time she doesn't see her period is when she may be pregnant. So, and with the implant, you, you know, you can, you may see your period or you don't see your period. That plays up, ah, your period plays up. So these are the two different things there. So what have been some of the reviews from the general public in Papua New Guinea um, on the implant and the IUD? Well, like with the implant, I think it's uh, a lot of people, a lot of the women like the implant. You just come in, you can get it. You don't have to be examined. Eh? You don't have to have an examination. So you just come in and you can get the implant. But we make sure we check that the woman's not pregnant before we give those sort of things. You know, they go through, you know, we check them up properly before we give that. And like, again, like with <coughs> the IUD, yes, in some parts of the country, a lot of women, they like that. Some other parts, it's hard. I think the main thing is they say they don't like to, you know, have a check out because you have to examine them again and that sort of, uh, yeah, before giving. But a lot of women go, but uh, this is one thing that we're really talking about the IUD because it, it's, it's a good method. And, you know, you see a period and you have it for a very long time. And, <clears throat> you know, at least up to 10 to 12 years. 
and no, you can remove it just when you want to have a child. So, and, and that's a good method as well. What would be your advice on um, using the implant or the IUD? Well, if you are, um, <clears throat> this is for any age, I mean the women, if you are in a relationship or you're young, you, you know, it's good you come and take something because if you're having sex with no protection or you're not using any condom, you can get pregnant. So then that's an unplanned pregnancy and that's another problem again. Huh? So it's good. Family planning is very good. It saves lives. You know, it helps the child and it, it, it protects you. It's good, family planning. And, you know, when you come, they give you all the information first and then you decide or we help you to decide and they go through and the staff will explain everything about the method before you get the method. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much for inviting us here to give a talk and anytime we have a center down at Hohola, they can come down and get more information on the different types of methods and we have more time to spend to you, with you and to explain things well. Thank you. Do you ever want to just get away and relax or maybe you're looking for a peaceful place to just think? Well today you're in luck because I'm about to show you a getaway that's right here in the heart of Port Mosby. The Wellness Lodge was initially home to Jamie Maxson Graham and his family. They built the lodge in hope of creating a healthy and peaceful environment. Now years down the line, they have fully renovated their home, built two large wings for rooms, a unique cafe, and still many projects to come as their children take on management. The main thing I love about wellness is that almost everything is sourced locally, from the food in the menu, to the staff, and the furniture, with the material used. Something really cool are these DIY coconut lights. Simply done with coconut shells and light bulbs. The coffee shop is the most ethnic part of the lodge. You enter through a garden, stepping on pebbles from the beach that have been cemented to create the stairway. Then between bamboo posts, and finally, as you look up, it's old fishnets. And that was a hobby for the Max and Graham family. Oh, and it doesn't end there. Logs as chairs, PNG artwork, and heaps more. Not only do they have a great weight loss program, they even have a menu to go with it. 
from a PNG fusion sushi to the traditional mumu accompanied by some freshly squeezed juice. And to make things heaps better, it's totally healthy. Wellness was built from a family home. Then the home was turned into the health and clinic spa and also some single rooms available. The two larger wings have deluxe, single and family rooms. There's a lot more I can tell you about this place, but I think you should come and experience it for yourself, especially the fresh juice. Stay with us, after the break, we speak to a member of the family. The lodge is run by the Maxim Graham family. Here with me today is caretaker Millen. Okay, so initially this was the family house yes. here. And then your parents decided, why not yeah. expand this? So they built the first wing. The first wing in 2009, it opened. Um, it was my mom that sort of, you know, was sort of pushing for it. And then my dad sort of found someone to build it and design it. And this was the family home, grew up in this house. Actually, the house is still, the building's still here to this day. So what's in the house? What's in the house now? So in the house, they've turned that into rooms as well. These are more of like the backpackers sort of budget accommodation rooms that they have in there. So that's like an, a night in and out? Yeah, night yeah. in and out, overstay big groups, um, sports groups sort of thing. So just to cater for that market and it's got a homely feel into it. So you said your mom and dad just how did they mix um, family and business? Or how do you all try to mix family and business daily? Daily? Um, I don't know how to answer that question. Let me think. Well, family and business. I mean, business is business and you want to keep that professional. So... It's difficult day to day, but you just have to make it work or... Yeah, I mean... Well, when you're in business, you're, you know, you do a business trying to work and then, you know, family, you know, you keep that separate. But um, I guess family and business can go well together as well because you got more people that care about the place, yep. that, you know, are passionate and want to see it do well and develop and grow into something good rather than just, you know, it's a job, make money sort of thing. Yeah. So it's the, you work with more passion. Yeah, you work with more passion. And then there's more people bringing ideas to the table. Maybe you should try this, you should do this, which is, you know, we turn, which, which can turn out sour sometimes if someone has an idea that they want to stick to. And, um, or if not, they can go the opposite direction, which is good. So tell me about um, where we're sitting this. Uh, this was initially what, the house win? Yes. So this used to be, actually, we used to have a cubby house here before. Um, and when they built the first wing and the second wing, my dad made a house wing here that he had, just a small one with suck suck roofing and 
he noticed that people would like to come and sit under this house wind, so he decided one day that, you know, why not make a bigger one, and that's what we're sitting under right now. So obviously he still tried to keep the same feel. There's still a lot of traditional material yes. in the house wind, so. Yes, so a lot of this material's been um, sourced out locally from Brown Riverside and Rigo, the bamboo, the quilla, um, the sak sak, um, the sago, everything's been sourced out locally and it's got a nice feel to it. So it's something that I'm very happy and very proud of that he's done because it sort of, I feel very passionate about this and it makes us a bit unique in our own way. We've got a bit of a different edge and different niche. So it's something I would really like to capitalize more on. Definitely. Okay, so because this was initially the home, is that the kind of feel you want your guests to have when they do come and stay here? Or what, what do you want your guests to feel like when they're here? When my guests come in here, I want them to feel relaxed, at peace and secure. You know, because it's not a big organization, we don't have a lot of staff here. You don't feel like you, you can get lost in you know, the crowd easily. And we're very flexible to meet our guest needs. And that's something that you don't get a lot these days with a lot of companies, lots of policies and stuff. We just like to, you know, network and, and relate to our customers from, you know, person to person. So that's what they can experience. Awesome. Okay, so um, tell us about your menu. Our menu. Who's like, who's the mastermind behind this menu actually? Okay, well, the menu sort of complemented sort of the, the theme that we're going for, traditional and I say my dad was the one that, you know, came up with the mumus. Every day we mumu from the hot stones and smoked fish and we stay traditional and it follows in line with his principles of a healthy lifestyle. And so that's why we do a lot of juicing. Um, we serve cool hours and no soft drinks. And, you know, we avoid sugars in the, all the food and we're just going healthy, a, a, a health conscious eco-friendly lodge. So from that, who came up with the idea to open the wellness health and uh, health, health clinic? That was also my dad too. And like I said, um, he's very health orientated lifestyle. So it just all fell in line with it. So he knew that, you know, suffering from his own per personal um, experiences from, you know, ob obesity and, and, you know, um, stress and the problems that he was facing early on in his life, he managed to reverse all that stuff naturally. So he wanted to open up a establishment that could also help and promote that alternative solution to, you know, that lifestyle. So walk us th through the program. Okay. What, what, what's in the program? Basically, we have four different types of programs. We have the, the alkaline sort of the five day detox which is to alkaline the body. So how the programs usually work is you come in, um, you see, you get consulted, and then you pick sort of the, um, the detox you'd like, and then from there you get screened. Uh, we, have all the, uh, we have all the most advanced technology to do this. So you get screened, it shows all your mineral levels, you know, uh, everything inside your body is put onto a graph and you can tell what you are lacking in out of your minerals and you know the excess minerals so from and you've this had a certain, certain amount of people come through this program already yes 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 a lot of prominent people come to the program and once your minerals is balanced then you know we create all your meals and everything and then you start losing weight so awesome, it's, yeah. the success rate is very high and right now the record for the current record is seven kg in one week a client lost seven kgs in one week that's gonna be me. <laughs> okay, so when are, when are your busiest days here? Your busiest days or what's the most busiest period? Well, the, the busiest period from May onwards, going to the end of the year, is the most busiest period for us. But, I mean, in this industry, you just never really know. I mean, like tonight, we're having all these um, delegates come in, 70 people, so it's gonna be pretty full. What are your plans? Where do you see wellness in probably the next five years? Where, where would so, you guys like to take? Yeah, that's a very good question. And that's how we're sort of moving every day now. Wellness, the vision for wellness is to create an environment 
that gives people the opportunity to perform at their best. So basically, in the simplest form, I want you to come here and have a good rest. I want you to sleep well, you know. I want you to eat well, you know. I want the environment to be conducive for if you're a business person for meetings or if you're an artist or if you're just a school student. I want you to come here, feel relaxed, feel at peace to, to perform at your best. You know, you, you sleep well, you eat well, and you can be well. And you can drink well. Okay, um, just to the camera, if people would like to book or come to wellness, how can they, how can they book pretty much? So anyone that would like to come to Wellness, our reception is always open. You can find us online on our Facebook page. Send us a DM or on TripAdvisor or give us a call or email. Awesome. Well, thank you for your time, Milan. No worries. Thank you for coming. Thank you all for coming and let's try one of these fresh juices. Yeah, why not? Hi and welcome to Tech People, I am Q. In December 2019, the CEO of Telecom, Mr. Xavier Victor, launched Telecom TV at the PNG SME Startup Convention. And that's exactly what I want to talk to you today about. But before that, here are some facts that you should know about Telecom PNG. Telecom PNG has a proud history of service spanning over six decades. From its early history as part of the government services known as PTC, or Post and Telecommunications. Then in the 1990s, during the government's privatization exercise, saw this entity broken up into what is known today as Post PNG and Telecom PNG. Telecom is into the business of providing advanced, innovative communication solutions in PNG and its clients in the region. The company is committed to bringing the world closer to every single person in PNG. They make it a reality for every person to advance, transform, and enhance their life at the affordable cost for a better tomorrow. New products are also available to help families and businesses alike to have access to more reliable telephone and internet. The aim is to continue to increase the number of homes connected to the national network where fixed lines are still the cheapest options of staying in touch. Okay, now to IPTV, and you may be asking, what is IPTV? It stands for Internet Protocol Television. It's basically the delivery of television content over the internet. This is in contrast to the delivery through traditional towers, satellites, or television cable formats. Unlike downloaded media content, IPTV offers the ability to stream the media source continuously. As a result, the user can begin playing the content, such as TV channel, almost immediately. This is known as streaming media. And here's Telecom's marketing manager, Silas McTorley, to tell us more about Telecom TV. Hi, I'm Silas and I manage marketing for Telecom PNG. I'm here to promote our new product uh, called Telecom TV. Um, we've launched the product on the 10th of December 2019 and um, since it's launched it has received a huge welcome in the, in the market and uh, amazingly the interest is growing. Telecom TV is a TV platform that we offer in, um, through our fixed internet service. Uh, one connectivity, it gives a triple benefit. Uh, that's uh, voice, data, and internet connectivity. Uh, it's currently sold in uh, NCD uh, market at the moment. Uh, we are about to roll it out to the other centers and uh, in a testing phase at the moment. Um, over the next couple of months, we will have stock available in other centers. Um, but currently, we offer in 21 channels. Uh, they are all free to view. Uh, as long as there is data in the account, customers are 
uh, able to uh, view the 21 channels. And uh, we are also looking forward to add on more channels uh, on the platform. So I'm asking uh, customers in NCD, if you already have uh, fixed line connectivity in your homes, please come forward and buy a smart box. Uh, it costs 150 kina and it's available in all the uh, shops in NCD. For those who want to uh, get more information on Telecom TV, uh, please contact our help desk number on 34567789. IPTV services can be classified into three main groups. Number one, live television and live media with or without related interactivity. Number two, time-shifted media. Example, catch-up TV, replaying TV shows that have been broadcasted hours or days ago. Start over TV replays current shows from its beginning. Number three, video on demand or VOD. Basically browsing through items that have been stored on a media catalog. And that was Telecom TV, 150 kina for a set-top box with 20 channels and more to be added in the future. This is Tech People, I am Q, see you next week. Welcome back. If you just joined us, you're watching House and Home. And as I mentioned earlier, tonight it's all about creativity. So for this DIY, I'm going to be making a photo booth. Okay, so the first thing you need, as you can see behind me, it's pretty blank. So that's the first step. Look for a nice blank wall that you want. And second step is to have some twine or some rope, whatever rope you want. Of course, depending on the theme or color scheme of your party, that's the kind of um, colors or deco you want to go with. So I'm just going random right now. So I've got some blue crepe paper, purple as well, and white. I've got these really cute fans. They were only 10 bucks for five. And stars. And I've also decided to incorporate some of the canvas that they made last season. Okay, now that you've cut out your rope, you wanna cut out the crib paper. I think the messier it looks, the more fun it is. So go different lengths. Mostly all, everything costs under 50 kina, but most of the stuff is reused. So I suggest, I strongly suggest when you do have parties and you make decorations or if you have leftovers, keep them stored and away. Just in case, of course, you're going to have another party later on down the line. So it just saves you a lot of money. Okay, now there's two different, two different styles that you can do, but I'm gonna incorporate those two different styles into this one photo booth. So pick one of each color. Put it together, roll it on top. and then just staple. We'll put this 
all aside. So that that's four. That's gonna go uh, two each on the ends of the rope. And then now, just in between and randomly with your crepe paper, just go over. And then you can go purple, or you can go another blue, or white. It's totally up to you. Okay, as you can see, I've already done, um, or I've put it up already. So I've got nine papers on each side. Um, I left a space in the middle because I like that kind of curtain, like how it looks like a curtain that's been pulled to the side. So now with these ones, we're just gonna hang them up on the side as well. And you're just gonna throw it over. Okay, it still looks pretty bare. So I still have my golden fans and the stars here. So we're just gonna put them um, all over the place to just fill in the gaps. So with some tape, just do a simple fold and put that behind the fan or the star. If you even have some cool DIYs that you want to share on House and Home, feel free to just message the House and Home Facebook page or you can just come by our office. I'm going to take these and put them right in the middle. I've even got the old art pieces that they made earlier last season, so I'm gonna put them up as well. Uh, I think with this one, I'll need gaff tape just to hold it up because it's a bit heavier. So the thing about this photo booth is you can pretty much add whatever you want and do it however you want to and it still looks really cool. Well, there it is, a pretty simple DIY photo booth. I hope you like it. It's really cheap. And remember, when you're done with your function, just store it away so you can use it again or the material at a later event. Well, I hope you enjoyed. Stay with us because more of House and Home coming up after the break. You're watching House and Home. Now more on creativity. I'm going to be showing you how you can paint this cute little vase and make an amazing centerpiece and you don't have to be an artist. I mean, I'm not an artist. So all you need is of course a vase, whatever size you want, some acrylic paint, and instead of a paintbrush, we're gonna use a broomstick or you can even use a toothpick if you want. Depending on how many colors you want on your vase, just break up the broomstick. So I'm only going to be using three colors. So I'll break it up into three. And I'm simply 
going to be making dots. Random dots, whatever size. Try to vary between um, small and big. Since I'm going around with one color first, make sure you don't put the dots close, too close together so you have enough space to put the other colors as well. It's very simple yet elegant, I think. Okay, now we're gonna go in with the maroon. Don't worry about it. Um, dripping down I mean it is acrylic paint and I think acrylic paint is the best for material like this this is plastic even on wood acrylic paint is fine but when it's washed it can come right off okay the maroon's done now the green I've chosen really dark colors because I like bright color flowers. I think I'll just do the bottom. I mean, I don't really want, like I said, I don't really want my artwork to steal the shine from the flowers that are gonna go in this. So. Now I'm just going to wait for this to dry a bit and we're going to put some artificial flowers inside. Now that it's all dry, I've got some artificial roses here. But as you can see, I can't put this here. So that, that's going to look really weird. So all you have to do is pull the top off. With your broomstick or toothpick, just put it at the bottom and foam inside so just push that in well there it is all dry and done a cute centerpiece for your coffee table but if you have guests over and you want to do a bigger table I even went to the extent of doing a bigger vase 